We have such a beautiful day outside today, um, but what makes it even more beautiful is that we can come here together, worship together, and enjoy this day that the Lord has made for us to worship Him. Um, It's all about Him. Um, I have some announcements today that Ken asked me to make. He's unable unable to be here. Um, Ted and his family, a lot of sickness in their family. Uh, Ted Cox, if you remember them in your prayers, uh, they would appreciate that. Um, and Rex is out of town. Um, so I'll share some announcements today. Um, after the service, we have potluck today. I encourage you to stay for that. The ladies of the congregation will gather after potluck at 1.30 to pray for the congregation. Um, there is a women's activity on Saturday, March 9th, from 11 to 1 here at Parkview. Um it says, prayer partners, the women of the congregation will be meeting that day. Please bring a salad to share for the potluck luncheon. Debbie Winslow will provide a devotional setting, and we'll be drawing prayer partner names. If you're not able to attend but would like to be assigned a prayer partner, let Courtney Brock know. Financial statements for 2023 are in the back. We want those picked up. Uh, those will be mailed out soon. Next Sunday is sacrament service, so there will be a priesthood meeting uh, in the morning, March 2nd at 8.30 here in the sanctuary. And we're already looking ahead to summer, so vacation church school this year will be here at Parkview, and Rachel Monroy is in charge of that and directing that. It will be the week of June 17th to 22nd, sorry, 21st. And um, she would love to start gathering names of people interested in helping. Uh, October 18th to 20th will be our congregational retreat at Camp Donovan. Uh, Encouraging everyone to mark their calendars to leave that weekend open so that we can all gather together. The theme that Ken was led to for this year is give a reason for the hope that is in you. And then finally, this paper was on top of these other papers, so I'm assuming that Ken wanted uh, that shared. Uh, But on March 23rd, there is going to be a workshop and children's activity related to anyone who works with children. Um, It's called Marshalling His Army, The Battle for Our Children. Um, And it is at Living Hope Restoration Branch in the morning through 2 o'clock. There's information on this flyer here um, if you are interested in, and uh, I'm assuming that that will be posted in other places. Any other announcements this morning that need to be made? All right, looking forward to the hour to come. Will you bow with me? Our loving Heavenly Father, we um, have joy in our hearts to be able to gather here this morning. We know that um, it is a privilege to come before you, and we ask that you would help us to draw our hearts out this morning so that we might remember and recognize that the things that we do today are to uh, focus our lives and our hearts upon you. And that as we learn about you, uh, that you would draw our hearts hearts out unto repentance, that we would be drawn to um, apply the gospel to our lives, and that we would have hope for those things that are to come. We pray that um, as we come to know you, as we come to love you, that uh, that spirit of charity might be in our lives and that it would spill out into the lives of others who are around us. We pray for our brother Gary that uh, he would feel free to share those things, of those words of life that you have placed upon his heart today. We pray that as we listen and receive those words, that they would uh, find place within us. And so we invite your spirit here this day, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Good morning, my uh, brothers and I welcome you to the house of the Lord in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, very much looking forward to um, the message that uh, you know God has put on Gary's heart that he will uh, bring forth uh, to the people today. Um, for a call of worship, be familiar to those that were just uh, in class. Um, I originally was just going to go with uh, Ether, Ether chapter 5, verse 4, but uh, as I was reading ahead in class, I added a little more to it. So um, my scripture comes from Ether chapter 5, verses 4, and then we'll skip down to 9 and 10. Wherefore, whoso believeth in God, that might with surety hope for a better world, yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, maketh an anchor to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. But because of faith of men, he showed himself unto the world and glorified the name of the Father and prepared the way that thereby others might be partakers of his heavenly gift, that they might hope for those things which they have not seen. Wherefore, ye also have hope, and be a partic partakers of the gift, if ye will but have faith. My prayer today is that we have faith in our wonderful Heavenly Father, and uh, we'll start with opening him, uh, 198, crown him with many crowns, the third tune.
dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, and uh, we would desire to continue our praises unto you. We have lifted up our voices unto you in praise, um, doing the only thing that we know to do to praise you, which is to uh, express ourselves with joy and to recognize that you are King and our Savior. And um, oh, that we could do more than that. But uh, we know that within our hearts, um, when we feel your spirit, um, we feel joy and we feel peace and we feel desired and loved. And we thank you for we know that um, you not only made us, but you love us. And so this day, as we gather, I pray that um, our, our heart's attention would be upon you, that we would lift you up that each of us would feel and know and recognize that um, you are alive in our lives, that we are loved and desired, and you call unto us to respond to you. I pray that um, we would be willing to um, understand that there are so many things about you that we don't know, so many things that are before us that you call us into, and that we would uh, move forward in faith. And so I pray that your spirit would be here in abundance. Those things that we do would be pleasing unto you. And that above all, that each soul here would feel the love of your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please bow with me. My dear Grace Only Father, Lord, uh, we come to you this day, and Lord, we give you thanks that uh, we have this wonderful place to gather to on this beautiful morning. Lord, it's almost perfect. The sun is shining, and your spirit is full in this sanctuary, a sanctuary that you've prepared. Lord, I would pray that um, these monies that would be collected, that they would go towards thy work. Lord, that uh, it would go towards bringing people unto you, that they would have a better understanding of um, that wonderful spirit of healing and repentance. Lord, I would also pray that um, those gifts and talents that are in this sanctuary this day, that they would continue to be used to go and to spread your word. Lord, I would uh, continue to uphold my brother Gary as he prepares to... Uh, Bring that message that you put onto his heart. Lord, um, may he be able to share those things that you'd have your people here this day. I pray all these things in the most precious name, even Jesus Christ. Amen.
For my scripture reading this morning, I'm going to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 through 21. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual work of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles an unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we had boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with mighty, my might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us. Unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Good morning. 
I have to take these off to see you now. But it's a little easier to have them scriptures here, the words in front of me with with them on, so uh, bear with me here. When Ken asked me to speak this day, I was hesitant to answer and ask him if he would let me think and pray about it for a while. It's a bit out of character for me because I usually answer in the affirmative most of the time. I generally assume that if someone asks something of me, that the request is reasonable and a specific need that I can assist with or might be able to fulfill. Seldom have I said no. As I've gotten older, I recognize in times past where no would have been perhaps a better choice or the correct response. Although I have read the Bible and the Book of Mormon multiple times, I recognize there are many among you who know the scriptures much better than I do. There are others among you that uh, seem to be more in touch with the Holy Spirit. I cannot stand here and say that God has spoken to me or that what I will bring to you this day is of God. But I will try to interpret this, I will try not to interpret the scripture, but attempt to bring you some information about things in my life that have strengthened my faith and have shown me God's love and that God is love. I'm going to focus on a couple of things. God said, uh, that I, I kind of use for myself is to, to kind of ground me in my beliefs and my faith. And that he said, love one another and love thy neighbor as thyself. To me, these things kind of overlap a little bit. When I was young, I grew up in a neighborhood where everybody knew everybody. And I can still recite the names of the, from 68 years ago, of all my neighbors, some of them that remained in that neighborhood for 25 years or more. I grew up knowing my neighbors, trusting my neighbors, and loving my neighbors. My family only went to church about three years when I was a kid. There were about half a dozen families or so that attended church regularly and some occasionally, and the rest just kind of enjoyed their Sunday afternoons and slept in late. But everybody celebrated Christmas, and most of them celebrated Easter. So at least it appeared that uh, they believed in God. Their morals uh, were kind of accepted Christian norm, and loving one another was pretty evident. If any of my neighbors needed help or assistance, there was always someone there to assist. If someone was working on a car in their driveway, you could be sure they would soon turn up a neighbor that was there to offer assistance or to tell them that this goes there and that goes here and help out. The women would often get together during the day. I know my mother would go across the so our neighbor lived directly in back of us, who happened to be her cousin, but she would go over there and visit with her and call them their coffee breaks, I guess. They'd get together, and sometimes my cousin would come over and visit with her. But uh, if anyone had a loss in their family, if a parent, a grandparent, or a relative passed away, the neighbors would always get pulled together and buy a floral arrangement or uh, make a meal or something. It's kind of how I learned to love my neighbor as myself. There was a woman that lived down the street from me that uh, as I have gotten older, I now recognize was kind of the spiritual leader of our neighborhood. 
she would be the lead person in organizing events such as uh, things that, that surrounded a tragedy or any celebrations or baby showers or anything like that. I recall once hearing my mother comment on a Wednesday evening. There goes Norma Jo up the street, probably on her way to prayer meeting again. I was learning in some ways that the Lord wanted me to be living my life, even though I had little, if any, formal instruction. Honor thy father and mother. I had always and will always have a profound respect for my earthly father. I love my mother as well, and she's part of the reason that uh, her example showed me her love and respect for him. My neighbors were nice, wonderful people. I would have grown up loving them just by being around them. But seeing the way my father respected and showed love for those around him made me un the, understand the importance of loving thy neighbor as thyself. In the wintertime, I'd often find my father out shoveling the driveway, and when he would complete that, he would go across the street and shovel the neighbor's driveway. And often when he got done with that, he'd go to another one and complete the task. I was about five or six years old. One rainy, stormy night, the tornado sirens went off. The neighbors on the opposite side of the street from us did not have basements. I remember my father running across the street, gathering up the neighbors and their children, and helping them through the storm over to our house and to our basement for shelter. Loving thy neighbor as thyself, doing to others as they would do unto you. When I got older, I could see things happening, mostly when I was at school, that uh, didn't seem right or seemed unreasonable or not fair. I, uh, like some student, maybe working real hard on a project, when you team up, you know, make projects, and you could tell that that one student was the one that put most of the work into the project, but it seemed like the other person got all the credit. I can't point to anything specific, but I remember my father saying, it's not always what you know, but it's who you know. I would see more examples of that as time went by. At face value, that statement sounds negative or perhaps a little unfair. When I was in my teens, I began to see some positive spin on that. I just turned 16, it was about uh, my junior year of high school. Uh, I had uh, made some changes, some spending money the, that summer by mowing yards and giving piano lessons. But as school started, obviously the, I wouldn't be mowing yards a lot longer as we got into fall and winter. So I figured I needed a part-time job that I could do year round. My friend Ron had gotten on at Arby's Roast Beef in Independence. He told me that I should apply, and I got the job. It's the first time I kind of experienced uh, not what you know, but who you know, because Ron helped me get that job. It only lasted till about March when the place folded, and I went job hunting again. By the 1st of June, I was still without a job, and my friend Gary was thrust into a management position at Taco Bell in Raytown. He and one of his co-workers uh, got the position because the manager quit and walked out on him, so the, the owner came in and said, you guys are the managers. Um, Gary was my one of my best friends, so he said I need a job, so he hired me. Definitely wasn't a case of uh, what I knew. 
I was only there for about a month because Gary had plenty of help and he didn't really need me. It just kind of squeezed me in a few hours during the day so I could make a little money. So I went job hunting again. And after an exhaustive week of going place to place looking for a job, yeah, there was no internet in those days, so I couldn't go online. I decided to stop by and say hello to my mother. She did some reorder and inventory control, the clerk type stuff for J.C. Penney at the Blue Ridge Mall. I walked up to her desk and I see she was on the phone. She was speaking with the shoe department manager of the Penney store on Independent Square. The conversation was about to wind up when she mentioned that her son had just walked in looking for a job. He said, send him over. I'll put him to work. It's not what you know, but who you know. I have a couple more examples. Uh, my friend Ron that I mentioned earlier he helped me find a couple more jobs during my older teens, even in my early 20s. And my friend Gary's dad helped me get a job. I have other examples. My, one of my mother's boss from J.C. Penney gave me a job. A couple of those jobs I actually did have some experience in. But who I knew uh, kind of gave me guidance of where to go. So. Dad was right for the most part. It was not so much what you know as who you know, but I have a caveat to that, I need to add. Christmas season, 1978, I was working at J.C. Penney's at Blue Ridge Mall as a, uh, in management training. I got the position both because of what I knew and who I knew. A pretty young lady was hired as a part-time Christmas extra. Some of you know the rest of the story there. But for the purpose of time, I'll just say that uh, young lady, I'm certain, got more than she bargained for in taking that job. She is now my wife for almost 44 years, Sandy. Now comes the part where I hope I can tie this all together. I'll try. Let's see. Sandy knows God and has known him all her life. I went to church not to learn of God, but to be with Sandy. I began to recognize that eventually that it wasn't something that I was going to do occasionally. That, it was, that wasn't an option. Sandy could see that I was making little effort in getting anything out of the services. And after coaxing me to singing in the choir, I had to start paying more attention. I started witnessing the ordinance of God in the church, and after a time, I found myself in a spot where I could see that I needed him. In 1986, my sister got extremely well, uh, extremely ill, excuse me, with complications during a pregnancy. She got an infection that uh, was actually life-threatening. The doctors decided that she would have to deliver the baby at 21 weeks of pregnancy if either had any chance of survival. Labor was induced and the baby was delivered and rushed to Children's Mercy by helicopter. My sister was immediately put on life support. Her organs began shutting down. I was in a place where I needed hope and I was afraid she might die. I didn't know how I could handle it. Sandy knew my concerns and because of her faith, she explained to my brother-in-law about administration and asked him if it was all right with him to call upon the elders of the church. And he agreed to that, and they came without hesitation. My sister was administered to, and within 30 minutes, her body began trying to breathe on its own, and it caused a problem with the machine she had her hooked up to, so they had to remove her from life support so she could breathe. The doctor was shocked by the sudden turnaround of her health. He said it was due to a higher power than his. 
prayers were answered in such a way that all who knew what was happening witnessed God performing a miracle. Both my sister and her now adult child survived. God loves us and is with us whether we realize it or not. Sandy helped me to see God work in calling upon his priesthood. I learned to trust him because Sandy, because Sandy and I love one another. Now I see God when I'm walking through nature, when I see children playing, when I see my grandchildren singing and performing, I see his love all around me. God was with me in my early years, even though I was unable to understand and realize it. He surrounded me with love, the love of my family and my extended family, my neighbors. My friend Gary was one of my neighbors. Ron was a friend of Gary, and that's how I met him, through my neighbor. In learning to love my neighbors, I was learning of God and his love. We find joy and happiness when we love one another. That love lifts us up and makes it easy to love our neighbors as ourselves. My dad said, it's not what you know, but who you know. I'm going to modify it just a bit. It's not what you know, but it's who with a capital W, you know, when you know God. We are blessed and have joy because of who we know and trust in, our eternal friend, Jesus. As I have honored my earthly father, so I hope to always honor my heavenly father, to listen for him, to accept his unconditional love, and to join with neighbors, friends, and all of God's children to abide by his commandment from Genesis 7, verse 40. In the Garden of Eden, Eden gave I unto man a commandment that they should love one another and that they should choose me their father. Like I said before, Dad, our Father in heaven, was right and is right.
Father, thank you for this beautiful time that we've shared here with you and with each other. Thank you for your spirit and these songs that we've sung to you in praise and honor. May your honor and glory be to you. Please be with each of us that as we go from here, that we may be able to take this spirit, touch the lives around us, and be a good witness to the ones we come in contact with. Please help us be able to take the time to be in your scriptures and be willing to spend more time with you and not of our own. In Jesus' name, amen.